That looks bomb. I have been missing sushi a lot. Now this is the one thing I've been missing ever since quarantine. And you know, I kind of refrain from going out to buy fish, raw foods, and uh, even ordering sushi for takeout. So it's a huge miss right now. And I'm taking this opportunity to show you guys how to make California rolls in many different ways. We're gonna make it in a fried California roll. We'll make it with some avocado on top and we'll make it with the regular way and I'll show you how to make a hand roll as well. So there's so many different ways we can do this and it's very, very simple. So I'm also gonna teach you guys how to make sushi rice vinegar so you can use that every time from now on. Every component that I'm gonna make right now is gonna be very simple, very fast and I think you guys are gonna love this. So if you guys have been missing sushi as much as me, I know we don't have the raw fish today but uh, this works and will satisfy our cravings during this stay at home period. you guys what I have here so I have this crab flakes um, to be honest this is one part of a crab mix that I use there's another part that's I can't find it at the markets anymore um, maybe they're not ordering it right now because it's not a hot buy but there's usually like uh, canned tuna um, but instead of canned tuna it's snow crab and that's what I like to make with this one can of that and one of this uh, but for today we'll just have this guy here and then I have a bunch of vegetables uh, that I'm gonna make with the California rolls. Well, let's make it easy and start off with our sushi rice vinegar. So I got this pot going here. What I'm gonna do is, uh, this is the sushi rice vinegar that I usually like to use. You can actually use it straight out of the bottle and not make the mixture that I'm doing, but this is how we do it at the restaurants. So I'm gonna do this right now. Um, 3.75 ounces of this. And we're gonna add our 3.75 ounces of sushi vinegar. Then we have 20 grams of salt and 70 grams of sugar. And we're just gonna mix this until it dissolves, which is gonna be pretty fast. So I actually have some rice that's already been cooking and it's been done now. So once this dissolves, we'll go ahead and combine this with the rice. So I have it on low while it dissolves. And it looks pretty good right now. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna turn off the fire. And this is the, um, this is what I use. Once I turn off the flame, I'm gonna put kombu. Kombu is dried seaweed. I only have like this much left. But uh, what we'll do is we'll put it in here. You should put one good size in there, but since that's all I have. And then I'll pour it into my measuring cup again. And there we have it. That is the sushi rice vinegar. Very simple, fast to make. All right, so I'm gonna put my rice in this guy. You guys don't have to have one. You can just put it in a bowl and we can mix the vinegar with the rice in a bowl. But I have this guy, so I'm gonna use it. Um, I think it makes it taste better. I really don't know. Maybe it's just for the looks, but I have one for some reason. I made about four cups of rice, um, which is more than enough. I just like making extra for sushi because I like making a lot. You guys can make as much rice as you want. All right, so while it's steaming hot, um, I'm gonna pour my rice vinegar into here. I'm gonna slowly mix it. And the whole point of this here, okay, you see that? I'm just gonna kind of slice away and I'm not going to smash the rice because I still want to taste the whole rice pieces, okay? 
and we're just gonna slowly do that and break it apart. What we're trying to do is we're trying to avoid clumps. If you guys think the vinegar flavor is a little too strong, you can put less if you want. Some people don't like the sweetness or, or the vinegar. So it's really all up to preference, guys. But I love it, okay. I think it makes the sushi taste that much better with this. Notice how I splash the vinegar onto the spoon. Um, that way it's not kind of just going into one place on the rice. It can evenly just spread out. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about with clumps. So you see this, every single piece of rice is coming apart like that, right? That's what we want. We don't want clumps like this, okay? So we're gonna break these guys apart. like that that was the perfect amount I'm gonna put it back into the rice cooker so it can stay warm look how beautiful the rice looks nice and shiny sticky I can smell the vinegar all right guys now it's time to make the crab mix which is very very simple so we have this crab here this is part one of a crab mix um, I don't have part two what I usually like to use is one pack of this guy. They're in the freezer aisle. Everyone knows what canned tuna looks like. I'm looking for a can of snow crab. And the can of snow crab, I would mix into this here. And that's your perfect California. Um, but because the stores don't have that right now, we'll just use this pack and it's perfectly fine. It'll taste just as good, okay? So I'm gonna use this guy to chop up my crab. It was the same thing we used for the egg rolls. I saw you guys tag me on the egg rolls. And it looks amazing, guys. Just make sure that we don't fine mix these ingredients. We always want some texture in our food, okay? So just like this guy, I'm gonna show you the texture that I want. Okay. Here we go. All right, this is perfect. This is what we want. Let me show you in the camera. See these little crumbs? They look like little breadcrumb sizes. That's the texture that I want, okay? Not where it's super fine minced. Um, that will just give us a different taste. All right, so that's my crab mixture. If we had that snow crab, I would have got the can, um, emptied out that juice, squeeze out everything in there, and put the snow crab in here. And then we're gonna use Kewpie mayo. QP mayo is Japanese mayonnaise. It tastes really good, way better than American mayonnaise when you're making these Japanese mixtures. We're gonna start off with, we're gonna use half a bottle of the QP mayonnaise, okay? And we're going to mix it to taste. So we'll see how dry and how moist it gets. We don't want it to be dry at all. So just like the rice, I'm not smashing this. I'm kind of just spreading it in there. Okay. You see that? It's starting to look pretty good. Okay, still a little dry. You see that? We just spread the mayo all over the crab. Just gently fold it and spread, fold and spread until we see the mayo is just nice and balanced in there. So you guys see the difference here? It's a pretty big difference from buying the uh, crab sticks. The crab flakes turns out to be a lot better. Okay, now we can taste it. All right, I'm gonna be a little honest here. No matter how much mayonnaise I put, uh, it's gonna taste dry. And that's my fault because uh, the crab flakes that I buy, they're frozen. So I put it in the fridge, but I had it in the fridge for about two and a half days. 
Um, I should have defrosted it immediately and then made this. So the crab itself was drying out in the fridge. So guys, don't do that, okay? Um, if you're gonna make this crab mixture, just defrost it a few hours before you make this, okay? Don't be like me, because it ain't gonna taste good and it just seems to be like Okay, so this is how creamy you want the crab mix to look. This looks pretty dang good. And now we're gonna prep out our avocados and our jalapenos, our cucumbers to get all that ready. And then we can start making our California rolls. So one of the easiest ways to do this, let me show you guys. Okay, I'm gonna cut about that size right there. All right, so this technique that I'm gonna use, this is the way we use it at the Japanese restaurants. I used to be a sushi chef for a few years and this is what we had to do every single day. And this is the same way you actually make your cucumber rolls. Uh, you know how it's like no seaweed and wrapped in cucumber, no rice. That's how we do this. You guys don't have to do it this way because it does take a little uh, knife skills to do this, to make it very, very thin. But I'm gonna show you guys anyways. I'll show you the two ways of us cutting the cucumbers. So if it breaks off like that, it's okay. You can continue. So you use a knife to slide through the cucumber. You don't really move your entire wrist or force anything. All right, and then we'll just lay out the cucumber like this. Okay. This is how you make the cucumber sticks for inside the California rolls. Okay. So this is what they look like guys. They're just little sticks like that. That's what we want. I'm gonna show you guys the other way of making the cucumbers. That's a little bit easier. So you just cut it like this. And we don't want the middle, okay? That's the soggy parts. Okay. Just like that, okay? Now we're cutting them to prep out the, that we can just go ahead and cut away. And there we go, we have our sticks just like that as well. All right guys, so now that I finished my cucumbers, I'm setting up my little sushi spot. I got my crab, my cucumbers, and my avocado. Um, I sliced them up, and I also have a half avocado here that I'm gonna show you guys because I'm gonna make three different kinds of California rolls right now, actually four kinds. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to make them now. So we're gonna get our seaweed out. I just bought any kind of roasted seaweed, guys. This is what I have here. It's whatever they have available at the market. Um, I just try to get something that's crispy and roasted. And I actually don't wanna use this whole sheet. I wanna use half of it. So I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna cut it, okay? So I fold it both ways and it easily rips just like that, okay? So there's a shiny side and a rough side. We're gonna put rice on the rough side, okay? So I'm gonna lay out um, three of them. So I'm gonna make a California roll, a caterpillar roll, and a fried California roll. And we'll do a hand roll later. You know, wet my hands a little bit. Ooh, rice is hot. Okay, so I have about a ball right here, a palm-sized ball. And we're just gonna put it on the top section, just like that. And we're gonna slide it down, okay? Not smashing the rice, we're just gonna slide it down, just like that, okay? We don't wanna put too much rice and make it too heavy. Okay, just like that. Now I'm gonna make the other two. So funny story guys, my first day 
at this, as a sushi chef. I used to work at this place in uh, Hollywood off of Sunset Boulevard. And John Lennon's son was the big investor of the place. And uh, he would come all the time. So a lot of celebrities would come as well. And one time, this was my first day, okay? I kid you not. Leonardo DiCaprio came uh, with some guy from Entourage, the, sh the shorter guy. Uh, I think his name was Eric or something in, in the show. But anyway, so they came, they're buddy buddies. And uh, my boss was like, here, make them these blue crab hand rolls. And I grabbed the blue crab and I smelled it. And I was like, oh man, it's kind of fishy. Like, I guess that's how blue crab smells. I don't know. It's my first day. So I made a blue crab hand roll. Sure enough, it was for Mr. Leonardo DiCaprio and it was hand rolls. So the moment it went straight to their face right here in this area, they smelled it, they looked at it, they got up and they walked out. That was it, just like that. They didn't talk to the server, they didn't do anything, they just got up and walked out. And that was the last time I saw Leonardo DiCaprio. And I don't know why my sushi chef, the boss, made me make these hand rolls for the first time. Um, but it would have been smart if someone who was more experienced at that time made those kind of rolls for the celebrities. Mr. DiCaprio, if you're watching, it was my first day. They didn't tell me to use new crab for you. I mean, I didn't know what it would smell like, so my bad, man, my bad. But anyways, guys, so now we have our seaweed. Uh, we're gonna flip it over, okay? And we're gonna add the crab, okay? Just grab a little bit, like about this size right here. And we're gonna place it in the middle. Okay, oh, need a little more here. Okay. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna grab some cucumber and we're just gonna put a little bit here, okay? Grab some more. So you'll see in the cucumbers, we have a mixture of some with the peels, some without peels, and I'll add a nice crunch and texture to it, okay? Okay, then we'll add the sliced avocado. This is the pure base of a California roll. For everyone who's not in the United States, not from California, you guys are probably like, what is a California roll? This is what it is, very basic. Everybody loves it. Asian or not, Japanese or not, everybody loves a California roll. And whatever stuff goes on top of those rolls, it's always, a lot of the basis is a California on the inside. So we are making this base here, um, just like that. And for my fried one, we're not going to uh, put avocado in there because I don't want it to be mushy. So we're gonna leave that one just cucumbers, have a nice crunch. And before I roll up my sushi, I wanna show you guys, this is what I have. It's very useful. Um, you can find this everywhere. It's called like a maki roller, it's a roll roller. And I put saran wrap plastic all over it so it doesn't stick to um, these little wooden parts. And so that's why I do that. Um, okay. Let's roll it up. Let me show you guys how to roll it up. So we'll grab the ends and we'll tuck and roll. And just like that, okay? Same thing. This is why you don't want to overfill your California rolls. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna shape our California rolls by squeezing everything on the inside so it's not loose and I'm gonna use the ends, push it in so it's nice and tight because when we cut it, we don't want everything to fall apart, okay? So I'm gonna do it to this one as well. Just like that, okay. And these are the two sizes and it's okay, you see that? These are actually perfect California rolls. Uh, for this guy here, sorry. I like eating while making stuff. So for this guy here, um, I didn't tighten it up yet. And the reason is because I'm gonna put a caterpillar roll on it. So I have my half avocado here and I'm gonna slice it as a topping, just like that, okay? Okay, 
And then we're gonna put it on top of the California roll, just like that, and we'll spread it out a little bit so it covers the whole roll. Okay, and this is where the plastic really comes into play here. So it doesn't really smash the avocados. And then there we have our caterpillar roll. That is how fast and simple it is to make rolls. Once you get everything ready, you make them within like a minute and it's good to go. So before I cut it, I'm gonna make my fried California roll and we're gonna use the same technique that we had for the chicken katsu. We're gonna put it in the flour mixture, then the egg, and then in panko, and then we're gonna fry it. And then I'm gonna show you this one because this one is my all time favorite. It's something that I invented myself. Um, I really like this a lot. When I was working at that sushi spot that I was talking about, uh, Russell Crowe was a regular there. He sat at the sushi bar and I used to make him my specialty. And one day um, he was having a party at his house and he called and he ordered everything to be catered and he asked for the very special roll that I make for him. So it became like something very special. I've talked to this guy, he's so, so nice. So this is my Russell Crowe roll and uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I make it, okay? All right guys, so I have my fried California roll mixture here. This is the panko that I use. If you guys haven't seen my chicken katsu recipe yet, go see it. It's awesome, everyone loves it. Here we go. So we're gonna put it here. It dusts off any excess flour. Then we got the egg. A lot of people use a uh, tempura batter for a fried California. I like the texture of panko. We'll go ahead and take off any excess egg. And then we have our panko mixture. And we're gonna go fry this bad boy up. So this is what a fried California roll looks like before it's fried. All right, there we have it. This is the fried California roll. Uh, I'm gonna cut everything and start plating it right now. And while I played it, I'm gonna show you guys some things. Um, this is one of my favorite sauces. This is eel sauce. This is very, very hard to find. Usually it's just like a small bottle. This is the brand that I like to use. So we'll use this as a drizzler on the top. Okay. And uh, I also have some jalapenos that I cut into little cubes. These are my green, red, orange jalapenos. And uh, I fried it up for about 30 seconds. And we're gonna put that on top of one of our rolls for garnish. So I'm gonna show you guys that right now. It's really exciting. I can't wait. So I'm gonna garnish my California roll. So you can cut your rolls in eights or in pieces of six. I like cutting it in six because it just looks better actually. So, ooh, look at that beauty. That's so beautiful. Okay. I'm gonna cut the ends so I can plate it. You do need a sharp knife so things don't break. Okay, put that to the side. Then we have the California roll. Okay, look how beautiful that looks guys. It's beautiful, right? And then we got this guy. Cut it down the middle, okay. And then we'll cut a piece there and a piece there. Okay, here comes the really fun part, guys. Um, now we get to design our plate and make it look all nice and pretty for people who are gonna eat it with us. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the, uh, the green one first. So it looks nice. Just gonna do that. Then we're gonna put the fried California roll. Okay, just like that. So I gotta make some more space. I got a lot of rolls coming right here. Okay. And then we have the California roll. Look how beautiful that looks so far, guys. Now we get to use our sauce and drizzle our sauce on there. So I usually put some sauce like this. Drizzle, make it look really beautiful. Okay, same thing for the fried California roll. 
I like to top it with the jalapenos for the California roll. All right, and with the space here, I'm gonna make a hand roll for you guys and show you how to make one. So we'll put this seaweed right here. See how it has that triangle right there? We'll get a little bit of rice, okay? Definitely less than what we use for the roll. And we're just gonna make it into almost like a cone. You see that right there? Okay. And then we'll put our crab mixture. Okay. We'll put a slice of avocado. And then we'll put a few cucumber sticks. Just like that. And then we're gonna roll this bad boy up. Just like that. And there we have our California roll, guys. This is our hand roll. Beautiful. And there we have it, guys. Our four-way California rolls. We have our caterpillar. Um, obviously, we don't have the unagi inside or the eel. But we have our fried California with fried jalapenos on top. Uh, we have our regular California roll and our hand roll. All right, guys. This looks really, really good. It's been... Uh, um, I don't know, I would say about 15 years since I've worked at a sushi spot. So I'm a little rusty, but it still looks really good. And what I'm gonna do is, um, you guys always request this, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go grab Christina and see if she has time to come try this out. Um, give me one second. Yay, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. I this I is my four-way California Ooh. rolls. I've never seen this before. Which one? The crunch roll. Yeah, the fried California roll. So good. Yeah. So here you go. I haven't tried it yet. They all have been watching okay. and uh, I think we're all waiting. I think at the same time, I'm going to make myself a California hand roll. I knew it. Because there's one for you and one for me. It looks really good. You can eat it. I want to see what your reaction okay. is going to be like. I want to eat this because the avocado looks really good with it. That's a giant bite. Yeah. You gotta, when I eat my California rolls, I put the whole thing in my mouth. I try to bite half, but then it always like falls apart and it just like falls everywhere. But I'm gonna look pretty ridiculous eating this right now. There you go. Yeah. Mm. How is it? It's creamy. It's creamy? It's really oh, it's because of the avocado. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I like it a lot. Nice. It balances it really well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the sauce too. Did you make it? I did it. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to mention. So with, uh, with the unagi sauce, a lot of places they make teriyaki sauce with it. And honestly, um, that's what I usually do all the time. So I'm thinking about making a teriyaki sauce recipe for you guys. Chicken teriyaki. You know, yeah, I'm sweating. It's really, really hot. <laughs> that's why I wanted to make sushi this time because it's so hot. I want to eat some cold dishes. It's perfect for the summer. Yeah. Let me wash my hands real quick. So sweaty right now. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, I want to try this fried California roll. Mm, the sushi rice is so good. Mm. Mm hmm. With the fried jalapenos. Oh man. Yeah, fried so, jalapenos. Wow. Yeah. So, when you guys fry your jalapenos, it comes sweet. It's not spicy anymore. And that's what I love about that flavor. It's really, really good. Mm. All right. Should we eat this now? Yes. I've been eyeing this one. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. All right. So good. Really, really good. Mmm. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Of course. Lucky you. We need a Hungry Christina video so I can just come in and eat. That's what I want to do. Um, you like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? That works too. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining in on this um, California Four Ways video. I hope you guys liked it. Any questions, uh, comment. Also, tag me when you guys make your stuff so I can repost it on Instagram. And uh, on to the next Hungry Ant video. I guess you're So shy.